In this lesson, you will learn to create a three-dimensional conceptual mass from the two-dimensional shapes that we just created. So let's go ahead and get started. So once our levels are set and our two-dimensional shapes are drawn, we are ready to begin creating a three-dimensional mass from both of these, or all three of these shapes. So I'll simply scroll in here, and we're going to start here on the lower left of my screen here. I'm simply going to highlight the first rectangle. And once I do, um, you'll notice we're in the Modify tab here, and I have a Create Forms button. And with that button comes a drop-down, so I can either select from a solid form, or I can create a void form. We'll actually be working with solid forms for right now, and in a couple of steps, we'll learn how to work with a void form. So once my form is highlighted, I don't necessarily have to go to my drop-down here. I could simply click on Create Form, and it'll automatically make that three-dimensional form for me. So now that I have this set, I will automatically, uh, Revit will automatically bring up my adjustment here, adjustment tool, so I can actually click on any one of these arrows here and make the adjustments. So for instance, if I wanted to move up and down, I simply click on the blue, and I'll hold with my left mouse button, and I can actually click it. And Revit will actually snap it to any level um, I want to set it to. Um, so in this one, I want my first mass to actually be two stories tall, so my top surface needs to stop at the third level. Once that's in place, I can hit escape to get out of that command. So I can actually continue the same process on with the following two rectangles, uh, keeping in mind my stepping concept here. So what I mean by stepping is this will be two levels. Uh, my middle mass here will be a, just a couple of levels taller, and then my last mass here will be the tallest mass, which is just a few uh, levels taller than the middle. So I'll select again, uh, click my Create Form button, and I'll make a quick adjustment here to the up and down. I'll bump him up one more level there. And if I wanted to, I can easily uh, make adjustments to any of these faces. Um, when you select your face, this grab tool will come. So the green so clicking and holding will allow you to make adjustments in this direction to any face you select. And the red will allow you to make adjustments in this direction to any face you select. And just as, what we, did, just as we did with the blue, the blue will let you go up and down. So I'll hit escape one more time, and let's quickly create a, another form for our final rectangle here. And I'm simply going to move him up two levels there. Once I have my forms created, I'll hit escape to get out of that command, and I can now join my geometry. Now there's two benefits to joining my geometry. One, it'll actually take these three separate forms I've created and join them into one nice solid shape or mass. And it'll also uh, carve out anything that's going on uh, underneath these overlaps. You remember I set these uh, rectangles here to be overlapped. So anything that's overlapping in here will actually be carved out inside these masses here. So to do that, I'll go to my Modify tab, and I'll click on my Join button. I'll select my first piece of geometry, and I'll select my second piece of geometry. Once I do that, I've automatically joined those two pieces of geometry, and I have one nice complex form here. And as I mentioned, uh, you could get a really good view here. Once I put my crosshairs over there, you can see here in this corner that this middle mass has been carved out, anything that overlapped into the smaller mass. This will allow for a nice travel or movement in between these two masses, and it'll create some nice openings. So let's finish this out one more time. We'll click Join in our Modify tab. This time I'll select my first piece of geometry. And since we join these two, these are actually one piece of geometry. So technically, that's my second. And once I click that, I've joined my entire thing. And uh, as with our first step, you can see here the inside's been carved out. And I now have one nice piece of geometry. So now let's explore how to uh, use voids to bring this mass to life. Um, I'm going to do that in plan view. So in my floor plans here, my project browser will go to level one. And I'm going to select model line. And I'm going to make sure my uh, draw on face is not selected. If I keep that selected, I'll accidentally draw a form or the void I'm trying to draw. It'll actually be drawn on this top surface, and that's not what I want. I want it to be drawn on level 1, which, will, which my placement plan is actually level 1. Once I have that set, I can choose from a number of my draw tools. Um, I'm going to go with my inscribe polygon. And I'll select my midpoint here, and I'll simply click and use my mouse to get it to uh, the dimension I want here. Once I have it in place, um, I can hit Escape once. I'll go to my 3D view, and you can see that form I created is right here on level 1. So I can click on that form, and just like when we were creating solid forms, we're going to go take the similar route and create a void here 
for an entrance into our building. So from this time, we'll actually go to the drop down here and we'll select void form. Once that's selected, you'll notice uh, my form is here and it's highlighted in orange. That lets me know it's in place and I can actually create a void here. And if I wanted to, I can make adjustments to my void here by using my grab tools here. So again, I'm making adjustments to this height. I can click on the blue and I can bump it down to 10 feet or 15 feet if I want to or anywhere I want to really. So we'll, we'll move them here to approximately 15 feet. Once I have that in place, I can left click anywhere in my workspace and that void is created for me really nicely. So if I wanted to make some more adjustments, I can. You know, I can click on there and mess up my grab keys. Uh, but I really want to skew this, this corner here just a bit. So I'll highlight this corner, and I'm simply going to click and drag that corner up, creating an angled, odd-shaped entrance. Once I have that in place, I can actually zoom around and scroll around and uh, explore what we have going on right now. Now I can actually manipulate my uh, the top surfaces here to create a really unique swooping angled roof line. Um, to do that, we're simply going to manipulate the corners or the points. So I'll make sure I have my modify button here at the top left. And then once I go to a corner or point that I want to adjust here, I'll simply place my cursor on that point. And once you see that blue circle, click and our grab tool will appear. And just like when we were manipulating our surfaces, we can do our corners here. I'll simply click, left click, hold my blue button, and I'm going to snap this corner up. Uh, just one level here and you'll see it'll actually create a really nice angled roof line for me here And I can actually keep that same process going throughout the rest of my rectangles and really quickly. I'll, I'll get this done um, Simply click click and drag Perfect and I'll do my last rectangle exactly the same way click in the corner clicking and dragging I'm gonna do one more step here towards the back to really accentuate this curve here now, I don't necessarily have to move up. I can click and drag and move down. And once I'm in the desired position, hit escape. And we've now created a really unique uh, building form. So we're now at the point where we can actually take this form and load it into uh, a project template. And that's actually what we'll be doing in our next lesson.